Okay. My name is Makifa Mohammed, and I'm a recent graduate of the Charlie Nuke program at Rice University. Today I'm here to discuss with you human service professionals my professional identity and responsibility as a child and youth care professional. The focus of today's topic would be professional issues that include boundary management and maintenance, education, and workplace culture while reflecting on my own culture and core beliefs. Just like any helping professional, CYCs have a hard time balancing both personal and professional boundaries. The words I use and the decisions I make not only affect me, but they affect my clients, my colleagues, and my loved ones as well. So there's a need for a balance in professional, professional and personal relationships. Um, a big factor in boundaries is self-disclosure. I need to be careful of pseudo intimacy and not sharing too much all at once just for the sake of sharing information. I constantly need to keep in mind what I can tell my clients about myself and will it help them and not harm the therapeutic alliance that we share. The goal is to change and improve their lives. I also need to be careful of not overstepping and getting too wrapped up in my clients' lives. Uh, professionals within our domain tend to take our clients' stories and lives at home with us. And I need to be very mindful of not getting too fixated on what's going on at work, leaving work at work and leaving home at home. Mm -hmm. I need to be careful of forming relationships outside of my professional relationship. My professional relationships need to be conscious of the use of self. Relationships need to be purposeful, timed, where I keep in mind that there is an end point to my relationship with my client. It needs to be client-centered. I need to remember that I have authority based on child protection laws and adult protective service laws and policies. And external controls for my behavior and that I can be sanctioned if not following these laws and procedures. I need to be flexible and prioritize, especially within my own personal life. It is important to have strong social ties as, the, as this is essential for survival within our field. I also need to keep in mind cultural competence and continuously be learning skills to enhance my knowledge about others' cultures and knowing when I need to respond differently. I also need to enhance professional or to continue to enhance professional wisdom, for example, con conveying empathy, especially within my own culture where we do not speak of feelings and we don't see mental illness and non-visible disabilities as a thing. There's a vast array of educational opportunities for one wanting to work in child and youth care today. The skill, the educational opportunities range from child and youth with diplomas to more specific child care, child and youth care bachelors, masters, and doctoral degrees. The higher you go in your educational background, is the more implications there are for opportunities, responsibility, and pay scale. Within myself being a practitioner in the field, I intend to keep updated in, the, in through current events, constantly reading and researching and finding data and theories, as well as following laws, policies and procedures like adoption laws and policies, 
uh, child and protection laws and laws that govern the social service workers. I strive to keep abreast and to keep learning new skills, life skills, and other concurrent activities that will enhance myself as an individual and as a practitioner in the field. Some skills I need to keep working on are behavior and thinking skills, like writing case notes, listening and hearing skills, gathering data and organizational information, following through on tasks and projects, emotional skills like handling stressful situations, conveying empathy as discussed before, and learning how to avoid panic. I also need to work on, in terms of my use of self, relationship enhancement skills. So these would be engaging others who are less easy to engage. Um, so like trauma victims, uh, mentally ill people, um, and people who are just going through a hard time and find it hard to open up. Um, I also need to work on problem solving process uh, motivation and resistance and so with this I would think of okay how do I help my clients begin to invest in change when they have so many reasons not to so hence resistance the values and ethics I uphold as a child and youth care protect practitioner would be my responsibility to myself um, so once again, I think it's important to have close social supports. Um, the lack of social support could be very detrimental to any service professional, especially ones who are constantly dealing with people who experience trauma and being put in traumatic situations. Um, we can suffer vicarious trauma, secondary traumatic stress, um, and even PTSD. Um, so having strong social support is crucial to anyone within the human service um, profession. Another thing I uphold to a very high regard and standard is self-advocacy. I Self-advocacy and just advocacy in, in general, um, me advocating for youths and me teaching youths how, or clients in general, how to advocate for themselves. Because that is very crucial in our, or in my profession, where most times we feel like we do not have a voice. Um... As part of my responsibility uh, to children, youth, and families, I recognize that their life space involves a multiple array of domains, which include virtual domains as well, um, which is one that is not usually mentioned. Um, so things like messaging, games, and gaming, and social media. We, yes, we do um, play different games with the youths um, in terms of, um, in aspects of engaging them. So we would play basketball or a board game or whatnot, but it's not, it's never actually mentioned. We're used to hearing about the physical or emotional or mental aspects of the life space, but virtual aspects are never really mentioned. I need to be sure to adapt to each individual's specific needs, which may be a bit unrealistic unreal because not all the times we are able to adapt or to change things for each and every specific individual. But as much as I can make the interaction specific to them, I do have well intentions of doing so. 
being professional at all times. So keeping calm, keeping a calm, rational, and positive tone, no matter the situation. Um, even if my coworker, my youth is becoming irrational, I do want to maintain my professional conduct at all times and treating others with respect and equity and being inclusive is very important especially within the child and youth care scope um other times youths find it hard to open up because they don't see themselves fitting in and being inclusive and finding ways to include such people are important for their healing and their um, growing and helping them make the change that's required for them to live a better functional life. Collaborating with others in other discipline, disciplines, um, working, building partnerships and maintaining relationships is very important um, because just being able to refer a client to a service that is going to benefit them is very crucial to the sustainability of clients' lives. And always remembering my duty to report and the needs of the child comes first. A lot of times, um, sometimes we're sharing information and we get so engulfed in telling the story that the session would be over and like wait I didn't hear anything from this dude this week because the session was all about you so I need to be mindful of sharing information and knowing that this is not about me it's about the client so yes I want to help the client but I also need to make it about the client um, so just knowing when to stop um, and also to med to sorry to model ethical behavior within my relationships and interactions, because these children and youth do see child new care professionals as role models, um, and so if I want them to be be better functioning um, members of society, I need to model that behavior and so that they too can model what they see so this is the end of my presentation